Good evening. Uh, my name is Dean Meadows, and I'll be sharing with us tonight as we continue this series on uh, the Christmas carols. And I know when Pastor Scott first gave us the assignment of picking out a Christmas carol and speaking on it, I immediately called dibs on what I call one of my favorite Christmas carols, uh, which is, I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. And I thought, surely that would be perfect. And if there's any time in this world we, that we could use some peace on earth and some goodwill towards men, it would be now. But as I began to pray and as I began to prepare, I felt like God was saying to me in the words of Lee Corso, not so fast, my friend. So I had to let Pastor Scott know that I felt like God was leading me a different direction and I was going to change it to the little drummer boy. He responded to me and I quote, I'm interested to see how you pull that off. And I didn't really understand at the time, but later on when I saw him in person, he explained to me, he said, you know, I don't know why they ever sing that song in a church. I mean, after all, you'll never see a little drummer boy in a nativity scene. And he's true. And there's no record of a little drummer boy anywhere in the scriptures. And since the scriptures are supposed to be what we're teaching from, uh, he wanted to see how I was going to do this. Uh, I went on to ask him, I said, are we uh, going to be allowed to play uh, the song before uh, we talk about it? And he said, well, due to copyright uh, laws and stuff, we don't think that would be possible. He said, well, maybe we could get our worship leader, you know, Pastor Jared, to uh, play a portion of it or all of it or something like that. And so we're standing there talking, and Pastor Jared walks by, and I said, hey, I said, can you play the drums? And he said, sure. I said, can you play the little drummer boy? And he said, I plan on doing it this coming Christmas season. If you could just sing the look on Pastor Scott's face, the very song that he didn't understand uh, why it was played in church was going to be played at a church that he's the pastor of. Uh, but I'm not going into a lot of the history about the song. It was first written in 1941 and composed then. And uh, Later on, back in 1958, some of the words changed just a little and it was released as we know it today. But it's those words that really touched my heart. Uh, there's a group called King and Country. I've never heard of them. I'm sure many of y'all have, but I, I kept on hearing that song, and the words just jumped out at me. So it's those words I want us to talk about today in that song, even though they may not be found in the Bible, but how they can apply to us as well. So with that being said, let's get into the, the song, and I'm going to be like J.D. I will not be singing the song to you, so don't turn me off. Uh, yeah, I'll be fine there, but here's how the song goes. Come, they told me, Pa Pum Pum, a newborn king to see, Pa Pum Pum. Our finest gifts we bring, Pa Pum Pum, to lay before the king, Pa Pum Pum, Rumpa Pum Pum, Rumpa Pum Pum. My little granddaughter sings this, and she can't get that Rumpa Pum Pum part, so she calls it Bumpa Pum Pum. So to honor him, Pa Pum Pum, when we come. You see, this story is one of the wise men. They're on their way to see uh, baby Jesus. And uh, they see this drummer boy. And they say, come, come with us. And that's the thing I wanted to talk about. We all have the call to come. Throughout all the Bible, there's always a desire that Jesus calls us to come to him. There's a song, another song that I like. It's called Come to Jesus. And, you know, the Bible talks about those many verses. You know, the one that's probably the most popular. Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Jesus is always calling us to come into a relationship with him. Whether we're individuals or groups or whatever, we all have the call to come. I thought about a couple of individuals. I thought about Peter. You know, Peter was a fisherman, and he'd been out fishing all day and said he was uh, done with his work, and he was sitting there cleaning these nets up, and all of a sudden Jesus said, he said, come. He said, come with me. I'll make you fishers of men. And I thought about Zacchaeus. You know, Zacchaeus was a tax collector. He was hated by his own people because he overcharged for taxes and, and kept that. He was hated by the Romans because the Romans knew he was a crook and uh, he was cheating them as well. But yet Jesus told him, said, come. Come, I'm going to go to your house today. You see, that's the thing about Jesus. There's no distinction. There's no favoritism. We all have the call to come. When you think about the most evil person there ever was or ever will be, they have the call to come. Uh, you know, Pastor Scott this past Sunday was talking about how the soldiers on the cross, you know, the ones that nailed Jesus to the very cross, Jesus said, Father, forgive them. So they had the call to come. So no matter how good you are or think you are, you still have the call to come. You know, those are some of the hardest people there are to reach because they don't see their need for help. 
And I know some individuals that are very good moral people, but I've asked them and they personally have told me they do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And just because being good doesn't mean that that's what it takes. And then when they die, they're on a path to hell. So it's not about being good. It doesn't make any difference how bad you are. A lot of times people feel like they're not, they've done too many bad things. There's no way that God would love them or honor them, but that's not what it is. John 3, 16, one of the most famous verses there was, says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And you know, I like to change that. I like to put my own name in there. For God so loved Dean, and you can put your name in there too, that he gave his only begotten Son, that if Dean would believe in him, he would have everlasting life. You see, God gave his Son the greatest gift there was, for all of us, so that we can have a relationship with him. And we have a call to come. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9. So the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some consider slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but for everyone to come to repentance. That everyone to come to repentance. Not wanting anyone to perish, and everyone come to repentance. You know what those words mean in Greek? Anyone means anyone. Everyone means everyone. His desire is that all of us come into a relationship with him. And all you have to do is answer that call to come. And, you know, if you're listening today, the most important decision you'll ever make in your life is coming to Jesus and accepting him as your Savior. Then we hear the song states about bringing their finest gifts to lay before the king when they come. Now, the last time I spoke to you, and I want to apologize for that, I listened to that and I about fell asleep on myself. I mean, I had no energy. It's very hard for me to uh, speak to a camera. I'm a belly-to-belly -belly person. That's what I call it in sales. I, I like going belly-to-belly. -belly. I like being in front of people. Um, it's really hard for me to do this. This is really out of my comfort zone. But I was speaking to you out of the, as we was doing the series in 1 Corinthians, and I had chapter 12, and it was concerning the gifts that we all have been giving how we need to be using those gifts to honor him, just like uh, the kings were going there to give gifts to honor Christ. 1 Peter 4, verses 10 and 11. Each one of you should use whatever gift you receive to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should speak of one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength that God provides so that in all things God might be praised through Jesus Christ. Now this is the important part. To him be the glory, talking about God, and the power forever and ever again. What gift do you have? Are you using your gift for him? Are we all doing our part to share the greatest gift we've ever received, and that's Jesus Christ? Not for us to be recognized, not to get a pat on the back, uh, not to get our... A post about us post on some kind of social media is the verse we just read to him be the glory maybe you're not sure what your gift is or maybe you don't have the confidence in your gift you know this little drummer boy must have felt the same way as we continue with the song little baby parumpa pum pum i am a poor boy too parumpa pum pum i have no gift to bring parumpa pum pum that's fit to give our king parumpa pum pum I never really thought about the words of that song until I was working on this. And it says, I am a poor boy too. And even though this song is fixed, and the truth of the matter was that Jesus was poor when he came to this earth. And he left heaven and all of its glory to come to this earth and give his life so that you and I could live for him eternally. You know, that ought to make you shout. It make a Baptist shout. It ought to make you shout. I mean, when you read about heaven and all this wonder, and you wonder, you know, uh, I just, you know, you can't imagine leaving a place like that to come to this earth where he knew he was going to be abused. He knew he was not going to, he was going to be rejected. He knew, you know, there was times he didn't know where his next meal was coming. There was times where, you know, he didn't know where he'd be sleeping at. He didn't have a, a permanent home or anything. You see, Jesus was not born in a mansion. He was born in a manger, as Hugh talked about in the first a series of his carols, which was a feeding trough for animals. Maybe that's why he was rejected. You know, a king usually comes into this world uh, as a royal and wealthy person. 
Maybe they expect him to be born in some lineage of a king. But the king of kings gave up all his power and all of his position to be a poor boy too. Then I thought about how the drummer boy didn't think he had anything worthy to give it to him. And I thought about the story in the book of John where the multitude was following Jesus and uh, Jesus said, well, you know, let's go get him something to eat. And the disciples went out into the crowd and they came back and all they had was this little boy and all he had was these five small lo loaves. And it wasn't loaves like we think of loaves, a big loaf. It was more like a biscuit or something like that. Five small loaves and two small fish. And the Bible didn't tell us that the little boy didn't think it was enough, but he did give it all. But he said, the disciples said, we can't feed all these people with this. But Jesus said, you know, put them down in sections and he blessed the food and they began to break it up. Guess what? There was 12 baskets of leftovers. 12 baskets of leftovers. You see, little is much when God is in us. You see, God does not need your ability. He needs your availability. And once you become available, he'll take that gift that he's given you and he'll give you the power whatever he has for you to do. You need to be doing whatever you can to out of him. You know, I recently went to saw my dad, and my dad, he just turned 85 this past Sunday, and his health's really been going down lately. He's, he's getting frail, and he can't hardly get around, and he was telling me that he's not able to preach anymore, and it really bothers my dad, because my dad has a, a great heart and a soul and compassion to try to lead those to the Lord, and he said, but all he can do is pray. And I was trying to encourage him. I said, Dad, I said, that's great. You know, your mind's still clear. You can pray. Boy, does this world need some prayer right now. You know. Then we read, go on with the song that says, Shall I play for you? Talks about Mary nodding. Locks and land kept time. He says, I played my drum for him. I played my best for him. See, the point I want us to see here, we need to use the gift that God has gave us and do our best. I'm going to read this out of uh, uh, the God's Word translation. It's in Colossians 3, 23 through 24. And it says, Whatever you do, do it wholeheartedly, as though you are working for your real master and not merely humans. You know your real master will give you an inheritance as your reward. It is Christ, your real master, whom you are serving. You know, maybe we ought to all read this verse before we go to our jobs next time. Whatever you do, do it wholeheartedly as though you're working for your real master, not for humans. You know, uh, that's the way it should be. Whatever you're doing, whether you're going, going to a secular job, whether you're homeschooling your kids, do your best. Do your best as though you're serving Christ. That's what this, this verse is telling us here. You know, I, I know in management times, I, uh, when I've been the one that's doing the hiring, you know, you're, you can't, it's not supposed to, uh, you know, use anything can't really ask them, are you a Christian? You, know, you can't really do that. They tell you you're not allowed to do that. But I'd always try to find out a way to find out if they were a Christian, because truly, Christians should be the best workers. And people should look at you and your employment or wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whether it's coaching ball or whatever you're doing, and say, man, there's something about them that's different. They should see Christ through you, so you're doing your best. Second Timothy 2, verse 15. It says, do your best. To present yourself to God as an approved, a worker who need not to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. You see, when you're serving God, do your best. I try to practice what I call the PPP method. Um, the first P stands for be prepared. You know, to, you know, be prepared. You know, how do you be prepared? You know, I don't care how good a football team is or whatever sport it is. If they're not prepared, they can place a lesser opponent, and they can get over the lip because they weren't ready. They weren't prepared. You know, pray. Pray. Now, I challenge you to do something. You know, begin each day and pray. Say, God, how can you use me today? What can I do for you today? And then pursue is the final P. Pursue to do the will of God. Don't just go through the motions. Don't just don't do something just to get your name checked off and say, well, I, I've done that. Serve. Do whatever you're doing as though you're serving God and to Him be the glory. And that leads me in closing the last part of the song. It says, Then he smiled at me, talking about baby Jesus. Me and my drum, come they told me, a newborn king to see, me and my drum. First Thessalonians 4, 2 verse 4, I'm sorry. It says, For we speak as messengers approved by God, 
to be entrusted with the good news. For our purpose is to please God, not people. He alone examines the motives of our hearts. Is Jesus smiling at you? Are you living a life that would make him want to smile to you? Are you using the gifts that he gave you? What is your drum? What is your gift? Are you using it? Let me brag a little bit on our own little drummer boy. Uh, his name is Braden Scott. Any of y'all know Braden? Uh, I've known Braden for a long time, and uh, I've been working with him in the youth group since he was in the sixth grade. But I can remember the time came when, you know, there was talk about him joining the worship team, and there were some people who thought maybe he was too young, maybe not mature enough. But he has a gift, and he uses that gift. And he comes to practice and uh, stays and, you know, there's times when he's played for three services and, you know, he's, uh, he's been there, um, you know, from as early as seven to as late as three. He started this when he's 13 years old. And most people don't really pay any attention to the person behind the, the drums. I mean, there's a glass enclosure there, but there's not a mic there to hear them singing out. But a lot of times I'll watch Braden. When you watch Braden, you know, he not only plays with his heart, but he also can see him sing with his heart. Well, we all need some drummer boy in us. We all need to come to Jesus. We all need to have that relationship with him. We all need to be using our gifts for him. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for this time. Lord, help us all, Lord, to come to you. And Lord, if, help us all to have a heart to see others come to you as well, Lord. Help us all to use the gifts that you've given us. To your glory. And Lord, thank you so much for giving us the greatest gift we'll ever receive. And that's through your son, that we can come into that relationship with him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed day. Enjoy the time. Uh, enjoy Merry Christmas. Can't wait to get this weekend together again, so I don't have to preach uh, to this daggone camera. Have a good day. Bye.